I'm Matt Pittman, CEO and pitmaster of Meat Church. Throughout my barbecue life, I've been lucky enough to make some amazing relationships with some of the top pitmasters in the world. For this series, I've convinced them to share with you guys some of their best kept secrets. So fire up your pits, it's time to meet the masters. Hey guys, I'm here in Maybank, Maybank Feed Store, and no, I'm not here to buy chicken feed today. Amazing barbecue joint inside, B4 Barbecue and Boba. So this is part of our, obviously our guest pitmaster series. I'm very excited today. This barbecue joint is owned by Emily and Nolan, and let me tell you something. I found out about this kind of accidentally. I got a lake house out here at Cedar Creek, and one of my buddies said to me, hey man, you ever had that barbecue in the feed store? I was like, no. Two days later, another buddy said, hey man, have you had uh, that barbecue in Maybank? What are you talking about? A week later, my lawn guy, Chris, who's big into barbecue, he said, hey Matt, you need to go have that barbecue inside Maybank feed. And I thought, all right, I gotta go. So I came in in early June. This place had just opened in April. Platter drops in front of me and it was all awesome. So we talk about, you know, a lot of big time people on Meet the Masters. These guys may be considered up and comers, but I'm here to tell you, amazing barbecue. I'm excited about what we're gonna make today. Let's go inside. Well, here we are. I've built you up. Now it's time for you to join the Meet the Master series. Yes, sir. Looking forward to it. I'm excited. So I want to talk first about my very first visit here. I came at the beginning of June. I've already told everybody how I heard about you guys, but we walked in the door. It wasn't really fair because I came in kind of the end of the barbecue day. Like 2.30. Yeah. Which is a big no-no. And my wife had said, don't get, up, don't get caught up talking to people. And I was like, no, they won't know who I am. I walked in the door and you're like, hey, Mr. Pittman. And you proceeded to serve me this amazing tray that we sat right over there. And when it got put in front of me, my eyes popped and I thought, this isn't supposed to look this good this quick. And it was an amazing tray and top to bottom, everything was awesome. I appreciate it, man. And that's why we're here. So Those are my early stages for sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you've had a, you've skyrocketed. Like you just started in April. We're shooting this uh, not even a year into you being open and you're making a lot of noise. You've had the editor of the uh, barbecue editor texas monthly out here i've seen you've had the goldies boys out here um everybody in barbecue and dfw area is coming out here so here we are yes sir hard work pays off yeah i agree with that well i loved your sides and i always ask guys in this series what do you want to make and i kind of left this up to you so why don't you tell us what you're going to make today so today we're going to be doing our signature brisket lote which we top with a texas sugar texas twinkie so wait you put texas sugar in it yes sir and we use voodoo inside the lote 
So everybody knows I didn't put you up to this. You mm -hmm. naturally just use meat church stuff in your sides. Every day. That's part of our everyday recipe. I love it. Well, this is one of my favorite sides. Um, we've made these in videos before. Yours is unique and different, especially because you serve them together. So let's jump in. Yes, sir. Let's do it. All right. All right. So typically we would be using seven pounds for to start for our daily lunch. Today, for the purposes, we're going to be using three pounds. Okay. So we take three pounds of our fire roasted street corn kernels. So this corn's already cooked. So it basically. looks. Yep. Yeah. So what you do here, and then for seven pounds, we would normally use one cup of the uh, mayo. Yep. But today we're only going to use half a cup yeah. just due to the three pounds. So we take half a cup. Okay. Then we would normally use um, half a cup of crema, but today we're going to use a quarter cup of crema. Yeah. Okay. And then from here, we use two ounces of hot sauce. Looks good already. We use 10 ounces of butter. We ain't here to help you lose weight. And then you can use to per liking, but yeah. we like to use four tablespoons for a seven pound batch. So okay. for today, I'm gonna use two. I love voodoo on corn. I didn't tell you to do this, like I said, so it's super cool to me that you do this. And once you have all the ingredients, mix until everything is beautiful in your pan. I love it. So this is already cooked. Obviously, we just have to let it come together. Curious how you do it in a restaurant setting, um, how you bring this together to hold it for service. So once we get everything done, it's we put everything in here. Obviously, the um, sour cream, the mayonnaise is in the fridge because it's got to stay cool. But the corn, we go ahead and get it heated up. Once we get everything mixed, we normally just take it over to our hot table, the yeah. steam table. We put it on there. And we so typically for a service day, we get everything prepped about 45 minutes to an hour prior to service. We'll get everything in, put the lid on it. And then that way it has plenty of time to marinate and kind of all the ingredients come together. together. Yep, come yeah, together. Perfect. Yes, Easy. sir. Easy peasy. I see this done a lot of different ways. Um, we did a video on it, I have recipe on it as well. You have a different ratio. We also have hot sauce in it. I love it. it smells yes, awesome. Yes, sir. And it should look something kind of like that once you're done. Perfect. All right, so we need to go put this in the steam table. Yes, sir. And then put a can... lid on it and then just let her do her thing for an hour. All right, let's do that, and then we're going to come back and kick it up a notch. Yes, sir. Right. Look forward to it. All right, we've got the corn warming. So now let's get into probably my favorite part. That's my favorite part too, brother. All right, so what we're doing is our Texas Twinkie. That's what these bad boys are right here. They are the jumbo four inch and up jalapeno peppers. And what we do is... Everything's bigger in Texas. Everything, brother, everything. So what we end up doing is we're gonna take some brisket and chop it up, which right here I went ahead and got some pre-made. Okay. So right here we got about six ounces of brisket. We're gonna go ahead and throw this, or if you wanna do it, you can throw that into our kitchen aid. Yes, okay. sir. Okay, we're gonna have Two ounces of Texas sugar made by one and only Meat Church. I like the sound of that. Yes, sir. Okay. We're gonna have eight ounces of cream cheese. We're pretty traditional so far. Okay. Six ounces of shredded cheddar cheese. Not everybody does that, I like that. Yes, sir. Okay. One of my favorite things, little secret. So, Meat Mitch barbecue sauce has been my favorite for as long as I can remember. So, this is unplanned. Uh, everybody knows I love Mitch Benjamin and Womp Sauce. I had no clue you did this until today. Yes, sir. So take two ounces okay. of Meat Mitch Womp Sauce, throw that in there. People ask me why I don't make barbecue sauce. It's because I can't make it as good as Mitch. Yeah, me neither. Figure okay. out that recipe, we might be onto something. We're good to go? Yes, sir. So what we'll do, go ahead and turn that on. Ooh, yeah. Perfect. Ooh, not too fast. Let that do its thing. Yes, sir. It smells good, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. You yeah. already got some made up. Yes, sir, I do. Let's, uh, I'm going to turn this off so everybody can kind of see what we got. See what we got going here. That's a good little mixture. Whew, it smells good. I could just eat that. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So these right here, we do them about number three, number four scoop. Almost a little bit smaller than the size of a golf ball. But okay. We'll take that. Here's the consistency right here. Okay. We take those and kind of roll them up and get them kind of going like this a little bit, right? So then take that jalapeno. So this is a raw jalapeno. Yeah, just slit de-seeded, de chucked out. Yeah, we don't not cut the tops anything. off, okay. we don't cut the tips, nothing. And we literally just take this, stuff that inside of there, 
that like such. And yes, it does get messy sometimes, guys. That's all right. You now, last time I did something like this, people talk about piping back, this, that, and the other. Like, whatever, just do what works. So you take that and you pinch it, right? This is a little trick that my wife taught me. So once you pinch it, scrape that little bit extra off right there. And we take the Wright's 18 to 22 bacon strips. Good bacon. Very good. I like the thick cut. Okay. Go ahead and get that on there. Kind of pull it tight as you wrap it because you don't want it to come apart. Perfect. Yes, sir. Everything's I better than bacon. A twist like that. Then once again, take it and we uh, roll it around in our Texas sugar, which I got some right here for us. Big fan of this, by the way. Yeah, it's pretty good stuff. Texas sugar and cream cheese is my number one Texas sugar favorite pairing. This stuff, by the way, uh, by, when this video comes out, it's actually going to be the week when there's no NFL football, but the next week is the Super Bowl. I think this is a good idea. Ooh. That's how she looks. Perfect. Not too bad, right? Perfect. So if you want to. Yeah, let's take them to the smoker. Let's do it. All right. Yes, sir. All right, brother, you ready to throw these on? Heck yeah. Tell All me right. about this smoker. So I got an ASW, Austin Smoke Works, 1,000 gallon. Um, it's my baby, man. I cooked a lot of meat on this thing. So what I like to do, so right now I got some briskets cooking over here. We cook our briskets at about 250. But what I like to do with my Texas Twinkies is I like to run them down here at the stack side, keep them on the bottom rack. So they're normally cruising about 215, 220 down on this end. And uh, just kind of low and slow for about three hours. Hit them with that post oak, a little bit of hickory. Yeah. And uh, dude, these things make love underneath the smoker. Love it. Ooh, it smells good. I guess we're gonna glaze these at some point. Yes, sir. We're gonna glaze them. So what we're doing is we're looking for the bark to set. Obviously the brisket, the cheese, all that stuff's pre-cooked. It doesn't have to be messed with. So the only thing on this pepper now that's raw is the bacon. At 18 to 22, it's a thicker cut. So all I'm doing is I'm literally just getting that bacon to go ahead and set, get nice and dark. And once it's set and dark, I can glaze it. Once I keep it hard so that way once I'm glazing it, I don't have to worry about the bacon sliding off the pepper. You know what I mean? Awesome. It's kind of like whenever you glaze your ribs, you don't want that bark to come off, right? Yeah. So, yes, sir. Sounds good. Well, that's it right there, brother. Perfect. All right. It's been a couple hours, so now we got to make a glaze. Yes, sir, we do. All right. So back to my all-time favorite, Meat Mitts Barbecue Womp Sauce. Then got to hit it with that Wickers Texas, man. This that's jalapeno good. jelly. I like the shine that it puts on it, and I love the flavor that comes out of this meat mitch. The okay. two together gives you the flavor, the shine, everything you need to make these suckers nice. Awesome. So what I like to do here, is I pour about a half a bottle. Okay. Okay. And then get that Wicker's Texas Jelly. If you can get it open. If you can get it open, man, it's tight sealed bottles. So it's a whole bottle of this to a half bottle of that womp sauce. I like it. That's yes. a big ratio right it there. It is right there. I'm a big fan of favorite barbecue sauce and a pepper jelly, so I dig this. Although you're going pretty hot, so I, that's unique. It sounds good. Yes, sir. You ready for the magic right here? Check easy this peasy. Out. Get you a little taste of that. See what you think. That's good. I'll let you know it's there, too. Good stuff, man. Heck yeah. Sir. Time? Yes, sir. Let's go glaze them. All right. All right. All right. We're about two and a half hours in. I got to tell you, this is my favorite part, the glazing here. Man, I'm telling you. All right. So with the timing, it's been two and a half hours, but I don't really have an actual time frame on glazing. I just go based off the bark. Once okay. that bark is nice, it's a little bit dark. You can tell that everything's kind of hardened up a little bit. Once I put this glaze on, it's not going to just peel it right off. That's when I know it's ready. Okay. Typically that's, you know, 30 minutes to 45 minutes before it's time to okay. uh, pull them. So we got a half hour to go or so on the yes, cook. Yes, sir. Woo, they look pretty. I always say you eat with your eyes first and when you glaze something, it just pops. <laughs> All right, let's let this ride. Yes, sir. All right, now everything's cooked, so show everybody why they're here today. All right, so with our finished product on the Fire Roasted Street Corn, I got 10 ounces inside of a 16 ounce deli cup. I'm gonna take six ounces of chopped brisket. I'm gonna put this on right here. 
you hand me that lime juice, please, put just a little bit of lime juice, a couple of little squirts. And what I like to do is I like to get that brisket down in there a little bit. So okay. that way it's in every single bite. Sometimes you make a little mess like that, but it's, it's right. okay. Get messy with it. So then once it looks like that, we'll go ahead and hand me a little bit of pico, please. Got about five ounces right here. Just kind of add to your pleasure. Okay. About right there. Switch you there. A little bit of cotija cheese. Gotta have that. Yes, sir. Crumble that around right there. Oh, man. There we go. A little bit of cilantro. Ooh, a little too much, but right there. Okay. And then what you can do here, since we added the lime juice in it, this is mostly just for pretties right here. Okay, garnish her up. Yes, sir. A little garnish. Right there. Oh, yeah. I need a little bit of that hot sauce, please. Oh, yeah. And then just a little bit of our cilantro lime sauce in house right there. Ooh, cilantro Ready lime. Ready for the magic. Take uh -oh. this Twinkie. Stick that sucker in right there. Man. And that is it, brother. So the crazy thing about this, not really crazy, I said this is a meal. This is literally a menu item here. This is a special. You can come get this in a drink. Like, this is a meal. Yep, it comes with a drink, too. That's a great change of pace. You don't have to come in and get half a pound of brisket or whatever. You can get that. Yes, sir. Which I guess there is. There's six ounces of brisket in there. So yeah, It's a meal in itself, for yeah. sure. I promise you. Um, I'm going to dig in. Go for it, brother. I mean, it's so pretty. I'm kind of afraid to dig in, but I'm going to do it anyway. Look at that. By the way, I said earlier, I ain't here to help you lose weight. I'm here to help you enjoy life. And the amount of butter to corn ratio we got going there yeah. is perfect. Boy, I got to get all that. There we go. The camera guy hates when I take a big bite, but. There's so much going on with that. I mean, the buttery corn. Got a mouthful of brisket, pico, just a little bit of the hot sauce. Like, that is super, super good. Impressive. Yes, sir. But we're going to set it off right here. Look at that. Look at that. That's Look at all, that, all that goodness we got on there. Here we go. Humongous bite. With that little crunch. Dude. Okay. I don't glaze my Texas Twinkies with all that pepper jelly. That's good. That's Texas. Texas, yes, sir. This whole thing is like, this is Texas barbecue. In a right cup. Here. Yeah, in Maybank, <laughs> Texas. That is, man, I'm gonna go back to what I say when people try to tell me Kansas City barbecue is better, North Carolina barbecue. I love all those. You ain't beating this. Dude, Thank this you, is this is so good. Thank you very much for letting Appreciate us come it. out and Definitely, man. and uh, and visit with you today and share your secrets for everybody. All right, first off, you guys have to like and subscribe so we can bring you more of these guest pitmaster videos. But most importantly, you have to make the trip to Maybank, Texas. Come out to the Maybank Feed Store. Come to B4 Barbecue Wednesday to Saturday lunch sold out. Yes, sir. All right, that's how the best do it. So, you guys get out here. Come see Emily and Nolan and crew and order this and tell him tell him you saw this uh he's gonna be cutting for you he's right here so when you get here say hey i saw you in the meat church video and you guys gotta make this see y'all next time is it cool if i get these in a doggy bag yes, sir well, this is continuing our post video wrap up that we've been doing the past two weeks gives us a spot to reflect on the video we shot add any final thoughts just talk about how it went. First off, I always say Texas barbecue is about the journey. Uh, road tripping for barbecue in Texas is a thing. In fact, people fly to Texas just to vacation and go try barbecue. The drive out here to Maybank is a beautiful drive. How cool is it that there's a barbecue joint in a feed store? Loved what we made today. Uh, you know, we made an elote video before. I loved all the people, by the way, that jumped in saying, that's a ski taste because it's off the cob. Yet again, here's another barbecue joint in Texas that calls it a lote. Love Nolan's take on it. It's amazing. Obviously that Texas Twinkie and how cool is it that they use 
meat church in it. All of it, super, super good. If you haven't been out here, you've got to make the trip. These guys are making a ton of noise. Uh, I talked to my buddy Chase Colston, founder of Troubadour Festival last year, and he invited these guys to Troubadour Festival and they were bar none the MVP. They basically brought their entire restaurant to the place and just crushed everyone with their barbecue. I know they're gonna be at Fort Worth Food and Wine uh, in April, which is super exciting. But one thing I failed to mention, the desserts. This is definitely Mrs. Meat Church's favorite part about B4. So this is a strawberry tres leches. They have a Texas chocolate pecan. Um, they've got sopapilla bites. Uh, they have fruity pebbles, tres leches. But let me tell you something about this right here. I like to take this out to my lake house late at night when everybody's at bed. I'll stand in front of the refrigerator, nothing but my underwear and a glass of ice cold milk and enjoy this. It's awesome. That's what I'm about to do right now. Don't forget to subscribe. Your subscriptions help us keep bringing these awesome videos. But for now, I'm gonna bring myself this bite. I'll see y'all next time.